I think we have the heart to get back and, and, and the, the people in Alabama want to work, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that um, our generation here in Alabama has been taught that. And I think that we are, um, you know, just like my business, I have I have 60 plus employees here. Right. And um, we're up. We never closed down. We're up about 30 percent for the year compared to last year. And I think that a lot of businesses, if they engage uh, and keep their workforce there, th the business will come. You know, you build and it will come. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the mentality of most of the business in the state. Hey there, fellow tacticians. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that little notification bell because the more likes and subscriptions I get, the more people see my conservative content, which will make America a better place and angers the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. I gotta say, first of all, somebody was nice enough to, during one of the victory speeches, steal away some food for me so that I could eat, and uh, your organization here, that's some top-notch food, especially those uh, chocolate chip cookies. Thank you so much. I've got a good staff. Yeah. So um, what have you been doing since the whole, I mean, we haven't been in session for a while now, so uh, what, what have you been doing kind of, is it just stuff like this in the political realm? Yeah, you know, I've got a... Um... I've got a dealership and, and I've got this and a farm. So we've been doing a lot of farming, but being staying close to my district and the needs of, you know, the people out there and COVID and stuff like that. So we've been, you know, uh, visiting uh, with elected officials like one on one and and uh, the county commission and in Montgomery County and Elmore County and just making sure that we have everything that they need and tools in their toolbox with the state in my district to make sure that everything's taken care of. What are some of the unique challenges to that that you may have, you know, for example, may not have been able to do because of the pandemic uh, that you would normally do about this time of year as a state senator? Yeah, we like to uh, meet with all our fire departments. Uh, we like to meet with our schools, and it's, it's been hard to be able to, to do that with, with their boards and, and mm -hmm. everything. So we've been doing more on 101 and uh, calling and doing more virtual than anything, just making sure that that they have the mask and everything that they needed, especially starting out. Now that's not going to have any problems. And then, you know, with the CARES Act, making sure my county is a municipality. I chair county and municipal for the state. And so uh, notifying my cities and, and um, that have the needs to make sure they've got everything that they need to take care of everything. Yeah, I'd really like to get your opinion on how the governor and, and her staff has been handling the pandemic, because a criticism that I've lobbed, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, but it, it's kind of bothered me, frankly, that they haven't gotten the legislature more involved in some of that decision-making yeah. process. W what's your take on that? Do you think well, it's been appropriate? Well, I agree. Or? You know, I think the governor has uh, made some really hard decisions, and we may not all agree with them, but sure. she's the lady that knows all of the ingredients of what's going on and, and what the COVID cases and with Dr. Harris and, um, you know, and I think that, you know, the mask mandate may be a little harsh, but there's, uh, I think we have to take those bold moves, you know, and I think that uh, getting back to your question on the legislature sure. being more involved, we do conference calls about every two weeks or if something comes up like the prisons or something to brief us, uh, the governor brief us on. And I think we will see a, a special either in December or January, early de January, mm -hmm. to be able to make some um, um, decisions on some stuff that's coming up that's pretty time sensitive. And I, I think the governor has done a good job and the leadership in the House and the Senate on conference calls to be able to keep us engaged. And uh, of course, we're not able to vote or anything, but right now, I don't know that we could have a a quorum, um, mm. you know, in the House or the Senate. I think a lot of Democrats are, are scared to come back. I think that uh, there's a lot of older members that are Republicans that are, are uh, you know, scared. I've had COVID. Uh, and, oh, I didn't and, know that. And I, I, I was really sick. Uh, never didn't have to go to the hospital, but got over it. But uh, I have a new um, a new respect on it. And I think well, thank God uh, you, you pulled through well, that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. I've uh, been out uh, with two negative tests um, uh, about three weeks now. And so uh, excellent. And have no, no, you know, reconcussions and no paralysis or anything. Um, but anyway, so I think that uh, we need to open back up by mm -hmm. long shot. Yeah. But I think that we need to um, to do it in a careful way. 
but I think we need to move move the state forward and get these businesses back to work. You know, I want to touch on something you just said because I think it's very important that you can look at it from the perspective of we do need to open back up, but we also need to, res to be responsible because I think, unfortunately, especially the way that social media is now and everything, you really only hear the loudest voices and the loudest voices are saying we should close everything down. We shouldn't even think about reopening until the virus is completely gone. And then you're hearing people on the other side saying, uh, we just need to open everything back up and not worry about it. No precautions. And I, I think that, you know, that's a real mistake. And I think yeah. most people aren't in either of those camps. I think that if we hadn't learned now since this pandemic started on how to keep from getting it mm -hmm. and knowing what we, if we do get it, how to take care of it, the doctors, if we're having a lot less, you know, people dying from it because right. we know how to treat it. I think it's uh, it's just like the flu. We're going to have to live with it forever uh, or mm -hmm. for a long time. But I think that... Um, you know, if we don't get our schools back open like we've done, I mean, we've we, most of them are open, and if we don't open our businesses, and I just think that the people need to be back engaged because of mental health, and, and uh, we've got kids that are young girls that are staying at home and doing virtual that are getting pregnant and, you know, having other issues at home, mm. and I think we, we've got to get back to the some sense of the old normal, and if we don't, we're going to lose this. It, that's more important than the money. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do need to keep people at work in, in a safe way. And I think we've learned how to do that you since know, this pandemic started. I agree. And I have been critical of Governor Ivey on a couple of those decisions, especially because, I mean, I don't know how well you know me, but I tend to be very libertarian in a lot of uh, my, my thinkings, especially on the economy. But uh, to the state's credit, Wallet Hub did a survey of basically the economic repercussions of each state. And I think Alabama was, I know for a fact we were in the top 10. I want to say we were sixth out of the ones that had the right. least Six loss of right. jobs. Yeah. And uh, I, I got to say, like, we got to be doing something right. What are the policies you think that we're doing that have, have kept us from getting hit as hard as we could have been? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Oh, sorry. Well, what are the policies that you think have kept us from getting harder than we could have been? You know, I think she opened back up a lot quicker than than a lot of people expected. Of course, uh, um, mm -hmm. and, and I think I understand your question. I, I can't hardly hear with this going on. But yeah, I apologize for yeah. that. I've got headphones on. And so yeah, I can't really no worries, hear that. No worries. But, so, uh, you know, I think that I think we have the heart to get back and 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 the, the people in Alabama want to work, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that um, our generation here in Alabama has been taught that. And I think that we are, um, you know, just like my business, I have I have 60 plus employees here. Right. And um, we're up. We never close down. We're up about 30 percent for the year compared to last year. And I think that a lot of businesses, if they engage uh, and keep their workforce there, th the business will come. You know, you build and it will come. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's the mentality of most of the business in the state, you know, especially your big boxes. And what's really helped us is the Internet tax, as you well know. Right. You know, that's helped us during COVID. But we've got, um, you know, your Walmarts, your all your grocery stores, your Targets and all that is really has done good, and especially the Home Depots and the Lowe's. Yeah. And so that's kept our revenue good, but our small businesses have done really good compared to other states. And I think it's just the willingness and the heart to drive. We've been taught by generations before us that work is what you know is what we're supposed to do. I certainly think that that is a a considerable factor. One thing that I am a little surprised about though is I. I'm not surprised that what you're saying about your dealership is true, but I mean, Sweet Creek is so dependent on tourism and Alabama is a bigger tourism state than people realize. Uh, how do you think that affected, especially with the height of this thing being right in the middle of the tourist season? Yeah, and I think that um, it hurt us on the tourism, but we had to adjust to attract more of the local people. Mm -hmm. Like we got more into the meats and the, gro and the hamburger meats and stuff that, that people couldn't get in the grocery store because... You know, we looked at it as, as it was a disadvantage as a restaurant, but the restaurant, like the the, um, the people who supply the restaurants, like the merchants and the Cisco's and like that, they were looking how to get rid of this stuff because they couldn't sell to restaurants. Right. So we took some of their goods and put it in our retail, in our, in our grocery end, and we're able to help them move some of that market, and it also helped us in our volume. Our profits were smaller because we were selling for cheaper. Right. Uh, and we couldn't sell when we the first hit, we couldn't sell ice cream. So we had to look at and concentrate on the local market. And, and because we didn't have maybe when this thing hit, we were dependent on about like last year, maybe 
uh, in the summertime, we would have 75% as travel. And now this year, we probably had 13 to 14%, less than 15% of travel. Well, you know, I really commend you on making those adjustments. And I have to say, that's one of the reasons I'm a free market capitalist, because when you give people the liberty to make adjustments like that, even with something like this that is completely unprecedented, the market will find a way. I appreciate it. I, appreciate it. Yep. I, I think that that's true in a lot of businesses in Alabama, not just me. But I've sure. been really blessed by my by my um, staff. You know, we, we have over 60 employees, and every one of them are either college or high school, except for maybe five are, are chefs. Yeah, and, and that makes sense because that also gives you the advantage of those are people that are less vulnerable to the virus as well. That's right. All right, so uh, anything else you'd like to tell our listeners before we wrap it up here? No, everything's great. If anybody needs to contact me, you know, uh, feel free. They can send me an email or they're welcome to call me on uh, my cell number, which is 399-6819. I give it out on all the radio shows, but uh, I'm here to serve. Anything we can do. So any needs I need to know about. Well, thank you so much, Senator. I appreciate you being generous with your time, and I appreciate you hosting this event at Sweet Creek, Sweet Creek Farms right here in Montgomery. Thank you so much. All right, I appreciate it. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.